Before Hollywood, the film industry was built from the ground up by an eclectic group of inventors, entrepreneurs, and entertainers. One of the most colorful of these film pioneers was Sigmund Lubin, the world's first movie mogul. The papers named him the king of the movies, and they called his Philadelphia-based movie empire Lubinville. The son of a Berlin ophthalmologist, Sigmund Lubin earned a doctorate in ophthalmology and then left it all behind to become a peddler in America. Uh, according to him, uh, one of his earliest intentions was to uh, sell junk to the Indians for gold and uh, did literally travel the country peddling eyeglasses and uh, tin pins and earrings and things of that sort. Lubin eventually settled in Philadelphia where he opened a successful ophthalmology practice. But when Lubin said he came to America to seek his fortune, he meant that quite literally. He was always looking for a gimmick, something that would make him rich and famous. And he found it in the 1890s when he saw the first moving pictures projected. Lubin was a visionary in many ways. Around 1900, uh, he was already promoting the idea of home movies and would tell people in his ads, I'll come to your house, I'll film your family, the next day I'll bring you the movies. He was way ahead of the curve. Nobody wanted home movies. This was not successful. Lubin was the first person to create a chain of movie theaters. Uh, he, his first theaters were opened to Philadelphia in 1902, and he expanded that into a chain of theaters that covered six states. They always had outside a very, very gaudy, elaborate, ornamental front with all sorts of flashing lights and you know, phonographs playing music. He would sell to exhibitors pressed metal theater fronts. You rent an old storefront and you nail this thing up in the front, you've got yourself an instant theater. You don't think you're going to be in business very long, he'll sell it to you in cardboard. Lupin was also a filmmaker. His earliest studio was literally in his backyard uh, where he uh, made films that he knew the, the public would like, uh, sex and violence uh, essentially. And this was an upper middle class, proper Victorian neighborhood. And the neighbors were absolutely horrified. You know, there's half-naked men jumping around in the backyard. There's these tarts from the Trocadero, uh, burlesque dancers and strippers, and some of them turned out to be transvestites. Uh, there were trained monkeys and donkeys. The, the neighbors became so outraged, finally, that they forced him to, to leave. Eventually, Lubin would open a string of movie studios around the country, including his most famous. Lubin's studio at 20th and Indiana in North Philadelphia was uh, built in uh, 1909 and opened in 1910. And it was, uh, at the time that it opened, the biggest movie studio in the world. It had an enormous glass studio where they could make five films side by side. He had a five-story office building. They made their own projectors, their own cameras, developed their own film. So you're dealing with uh, upwards of a thousand people. So it really was like a little world, and the press called it Lubinville. Lubin was an imposing and eccentric figure. Standing at six foot three and partially blind, he was described by one employee as an onion dome giant with one white eye. His personality was equally eccentric. He was notorious for yelling and screaming and you know, pounding his fists on his head and, and cursing in three different languages. He had a big open touring car and he had brass bells made with the name Lubin carved on them and they sat on the fenders and he would make his way through Philadelphia, you know, beautifully dressed, smoking these cigars, flashing the diamond. And, you know, he, he was a mogul. Long before that term was used, he was, you know, he was really the first movie mogul. But Sigmund Lubin's luck was about to run out. An explosion in Lubinville Film Vault destroyed the master negatives for all of his films. Two months later, World War I broke out, drying up Lubin's foreign market. Finally, the Motion Picture Patents Company lost a major lawsuit, costing Lubin millions. In less than a year, the king of the movies had lost everything. So he went back to what he had started doing. He ended up back in the optical shop. And so the story has this amazing uh, quality of going full cycle. He starts in the optical shop, he builds a big movie empire. He ends up back behind the counter and scheming the whole time as to how he's going to get back into the movie industry. But Lubin never made his comeback. Health problems forced him into retirement, and on September 11th, 1923, in a little bungalow just outside of Atlantic City, Sigmund Lubin died.
20th in Indiana, right? Mm-hmm. That's less than uh, four miles away, so I went up and took some pictures. Oh. Uh, that neighborhood's going through some really rough times. Tough to believe that was Hollywood on the Delaware. Hmm. But look at all that he accomplished, all that he passed down to future generations. The place burned down, a thousand people lost their jobs. He died penniless. So what did he leave behind? Empty lots? A bunch of silent films no one's watched in this century? Uh, Sigmund Lubin invented the movies! Uh, he brought sex and violence to the silver screen! He's my hero. Oh. The man employed over a thousand people and taught them how to make movies. He and Edison created an industry. How is that not enough of a legacy? How is that less valuable than passing on a recipe for meatballs with gravy or, or teaching your grandkids a song? or building a family home that lasts for 200 years. But the place burned down. There's nothing left of the Lubin legacy. <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, Star Wars. Independent films. My Cousin Vinny. Oh, great film. Did Lubin direct? No, he played Vinny. Hmm? What did the guy from 1910 leave us? And for all people for 100 years from now? Movies. Movies, damn it. And... One more thing I see so often in humans. Something that passes from one generation to the next. Something wonderful. He was fearless. 